Okay, welcome. Good night, everybody. I am clearly inside with you. It's me. It's Sunday night. Sunday night as usual. You get your information technology. I'm Mr. Charles. I'm from Make It Simple TT and I teach IT. And if you're here, you're in live because you know what we're doing. Trying to get through the whole um is my camera leaning? It looking like it's leaning. Alright, I'll probably have to fix that after here, but it's leaning. I can see it. Alright. O C D. Yeah. Um Yeah, welcome to those on the inside. All the people that were in the pre-game chat. Free live chat. Ren Early mod on the inside. Faith was there. Who's MYP? MYP. And Giovan. Giovin. Is Giovan or Giovin? I've seen Giovan for the past few weeks. But. Alright, so share up the live. Click the, click the little share button. Um, Click the like button. And... Tonight we're going through May 2013. Is Gio? I still don't know what the V A N N I E Vani Giovanni. It's Giovanni. We ought to break that down into like a really uh, like a lot of syllables because I am really horrible at names. Just letting you know. So do um. Do expect too much. Do expect too much from me. Giovanni. So it's Giovanni. Wow. Well, look. I just learned something today. Yeah. Hey, hey look, Sherry, too. Welcome, welcome. Crunch time, boy. Exams in two months, thereabout. Okay, so today. May 2013, we are in the quest to reach to May 2010. So we, we're doing all the papers all the way back from 20, 2021, all the way back. So right now we reach, we've reached, uh, it's supposed to be May 2013, up January 2013 here. Yeah. I'm going to fix that. May 2013. Yeah. All right. So share the live, share it with your friends, share it in your WhatsApp group, share it in um wherever wherever school groups you have, wherever classes, share it on Instagram, put it in Discord, put it in, um, put in, Sherry, Sherry, you're here for the nostalgia, I've, I've video memes now, you know, yeah, 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 all right, so, let's go! <laughs> Hi, my name is Mr. Charles from Make It Simple TT Educational Solutions and I teach information technology. I have classes at the CSEC level, at the CAPE level, information technology classes for adults who want to learn technology, workshops, seminars for teachers, seminars for companies, anything that makes information technology simple for people who need to use it, we do it. And we are back. Let's get to our paper. May 2013 now in the official CXC list of past papers that they have on their website on the CXC store. This paper is not included. So I think a lot of people don't even know that this paper exists or never did it before. So I can't remember what the paper is about. So tonight might be a surprise. But as, as I told you all, I have some new memes tonight. So, this is where the fun begins. Let's go. Right, that's media. All right, good. You're inside. Um, start. Notice, notice it crooked, right? 
Because when you when you get a crooked paper, that means somebody scan it. This was back in the days before they had PDF something. You used to go and get the paper, and then you had to go and scan it, and it used to get not scan it, used to get copied, and it used to get copied um sideways and all kind of thing. Ah, the dark days, the dark days. You you kids don't know how easy it happened now. Just get one PDF and a Google Drive. Eh? All right. All right, name the input or output device at best uh, that is best suited to perform each of the following activities. We are starting with viewing images from one from one computer to another. Viewing images from one computer to another over the internet. Viewing images from one computer to another. Viewing an image to another over the internet. Viewing images images from one computer to another over the internet viewing images viewing images from one computer Over the internet. Why in the world they have over the internet? No, no, I don't know. Not making any sense. Viewing images from one computer to another over the internet. I I am of the view that they instead of putting viewing, they were supposed to put sending. I feel that is what I was looking for. I feel so. Because there's no way you could view an image from one computer to another over the internet. You could send an image from one computer to another over the internet. But then they ask for an input or output device as best suited to perform it. Viewing images. Alright, so to view an image, you need a monitor. We'll just leave that there and just kind of say, all right, cool. We'll just accept that. Because all of these other things here, from one computer to another over the internet, it, it doesn't really... It doesn't really make much sense. It doesn't make much sense. But anyhow. Producing architectural drawings, right? That is a plotter. That's a type of printer. Playing games using the computer a uh, joystick. I think they will accept gamepad now. Game controller or gamepad. Um receiving information electronically from a code on a product. code on a product that would be a barcode reader who's that it i'm on inform one on here hey you'll get one in it really really quick yeah easily yeah barcode reader identifying users by scanning their fingerprints a biometric scanner Basically, um, Kim wants to purchase a printer. Stay two characteristics of printer that Kim should consider when purchasing it. Um, speed. Um, noise. Um, size. Yeah. Those should be good. Speed, noise, and size. State the general name associated with devices such as a printer. General name, um, printers would be output devices. Explain what is meant by a bi-stable device. Um, a device that 
has two stable states one or zero slash on or all right something so who's that let me see what's going on in chat there um size and speed Dwayne right cx results are out hey i got a two from studying on your own and help from my videos well done sir well done well done let me give you a little Doing it, you're doing it again to get one by chance. Let's ask, ask him for a friend. Um, yeah, so this first question here, this well, the first, the first question was cake, right? But they see this number one, this, this part one here, that part one there, that wasn't really good. Huh? Yeah, that part one wasn't too pretty. But anyhow, let's go on. Name two types of user interfaces. You have um, GUI. You have command line. And you have menu driven. All right, any one of those two? Should be good. Um, yeah, I can't see any other, other, other answers there. State an appropriate input device for each um, named above. All right, so GUI. GUI would be our mouse. Because you have to click. Command line. Command line could be shortened for CMD. Command line could be... Um, Let's call this thing keyboard. And um menu driven could be a touch screen or buttons. Something like that. Should be okay. Um was that it? Somebody saying that the resolution is poor. If your resolution is poor, most likely YouTube scaled it down because the internet connection may not be fast enough to handle it without sticking. Because um, this stream coming out in 1080p, but YouTube will scale it down if um, if they realize things things not working out the way that it's supposed to go. So, yeah. Um... Touch screen could work for G GUI too, yeah. You could get mouse or touch screen, yeah. That's that's some that's some good stuff there, boy. Giovanni. Alright, well done, well done, well done. Alright, state the um state the appropriate input device for each interface named in A part one above. Oh no, I'll do that. Name the type of menu illustrated in menu A and menu B below. Alright, this one here, menu A is a drop down because it actually drops down. Alright, just click on it and drop down. And this one is a pop up. Yeah. All right, so you have drop down and pop up. Those are the two types of menus. Name one operating system. Well, yeah, Windows. Um, usually they will want a Windows something, so you could put Windows ten for now because you are smart. But Windows should work. Uh, Mac OS. You will get iOS. You will get Android. And you'll also get Linux. If you put different Linux flavors, like Ubuntu and different types of Linux, you could get that also. The other thing, they will take that away from you. All right, explain one function of our operating system. This is not only syllabus anymore, um, functions of our operating system, but um, 
what you really want to do is um usually just put it with like something management so they have memory management file management input output management 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 process management security management but that they, they, they really access any syllabus anymore so you can kind of avoid that question if you see it just to let you all know based on the syllabus if you haven't um if you haven't actually gone through and checked to see what the syllabus has on it um i recommend you do uh, all right so welcome to all the people that would have just joined i saw the numbers just went up a little bit if you just joined don't forget to like the video don't forget to share it and um we on the road to doing all the papers from 2010 all the way down to 2010 so right now we on may 2013. all right steady computer term that is described in each of the following statements Secret information is obtained by spying on competitors or opponents, right? So that's secret information. That's a big word. Secret information. Secret information will be either um it wouldn't be industrial espionage because you're spying on competitors or opponents. It could be industrial espionage, you know. Mm. Um Secret information obtained. No, industrial espionage is the art of spying. So you want to say electronic eavesdropping. Electronic eavesdropping. I hope I spelled eavesdropping correct, but um, if I don't, it is not an English exam. Ah, uh, next what we are now. Um. A malicious program that's designed to corrupt files on a computer to cause hardware to malfunction. Come now, man. A virus. Um, Giovanni, I think Giovanni, I think they'll accept um industrial espionage, you know, because they say spying. Once they say spying, industrial espionage should be okay. Because espionage is actually spying, it is the actual art of spying. So, yeah. The illegal copying of programs. Software piracy. But, I mean, of course, no one, no one in the Caribbean participates in software piracy. Who? Who? Who does that? Never. Mm -mm. Do you participate in software piracy? I don't think so. I don't know. Impossible. You don't have a game on your desktop there that have a crack that you install it with? No, never. You don't have a crack version of Microsoft Office on your computer that you're using to do your do to do work. No. You don't have a big thing on your on your um on your computer saying please validate your Windows. Never. No. Mm -mm, mm -mm, never. Um using another person's credit card for transactions without his or her permission. That is um identity theft. Identity theft. Yeah. Um Spanish you know see I hit 10k. Oh I forget you know on Instagram. Yeah. I'll celebrate that on Instagram this week, but I ain't really do any YouTube videos for it yet. Someday. Alright, using a computer to alter company data. That is... What is using a computer to alter company data? Hmm. 
Pack in. I was even saying I think of hacking. Hacking sounds sound correct there. Yeah, so those are some keywords. Um as Antonio copyright is the modern day name. Yeah, I think the syllabus has software piracy and copyright infringement. So um I guess I wanna do two would work here. The software piracy will be more for making it and selling it, and the copyright infringement will be like making copies of something or copying something more than you're supposed to and putting it in like a research paper and them kind of thing. So, um, yeah, that would be the best. That would be the best answers. So, yeah, you are correct. You are correct, um, Antonio. Oh, yeah. Well done, well done, well done. Woo! Look the paragraph. You know when all see this, when you all see these paragraphs, all the paragraph and be like, what in the world? And you just ask yourself why they have so much words. And you go on to watch the question and then be like this. But all this stuff. Read the paragraph. Read the paragraph. You could do the question. Anytime you see a paragraph in IT, don't think that they made a mistake. They put it there for a reason because they need to understand the work. So please, don't watch the question. Don't watch the question. And be like, Why are you running? Why are you running? So let me take our time. Now let's go through the paragraph and see what they want us to do, right? Daily technical term that describes each of the misuse of data labeled in one to four. So look, look, what you're really trying to do is just you're basically pulling any one of these here, you know. Some of you would have seen the paragraph and be like, nah, I know I'm saying that, never, that ain't making, gonna make any sense. And just the paragraph alone even given the, the ability to answer this part better. So don't be afraid of the paragraphs. Accept them. Embrace them. You'll you'll make it further, right? So let's go. A commercial bank has experienced several security breaches. Thanks. In one instance, an employee who was interviewed for promotion was not selected because he used emails to mount a vicious attack on a supervisor. So if you're using emails. Oh no, it's not actually gonna help you to look at this, right? Yeah. Using emails to mount a vicious attack. One, you are spreading false information about somebody, so that is propaganda. Right? That's like, you know, people who are sending one of their messages about you in WhatsApp groups and thing. Propaganda is the, is, the, is the keyword for it. Blackmail is a thing, but the actual IT term is propaganda. Propaganda is the word that you use when you're dealing with information, right? Okay, cool. Two. Um, some employees were electronically accessing other employees' systems without permission. Accessing somebody's, um, system without permission, that's hacking, right? Because you are, you're basically there, um, in your own place. Or, there's another one called unauthorized access. I think that would in the syllabus too. Right, they have those things in the um in the syllabus. And then part three. Um the organization then hired a software expert to install additional software which will be able to monitor the use of the computers by employees. So if you're monitoring the the use of the computer by employees, you are checking on them. So you are either electronic eavesdropping or um what's the other word by is electronic eavesdropping is one of them they confuse it to one of them all the time. Electronic eavesdropping and something where this go through all the data. Bruh. I forget. I'll put electronic eavesdropping. Um, the word 
as you would by now micromanaging that too broad. Electronic eavesdropping will count, but there's another one. There's a better answer back. I think going back to my right now. I'll, I'll, I'll come back to my right now. Electronic eavesdropping. Oh. This is a snooping. Or is snooping, why? Right? Why When they come back, I'll, I'll come back to the answer and write it down, right? Part 4. Monitor the use of the computer. However, since the installation of a new software, there has been an increase in the rate at which people are able to access cash from some customers' accounts um, at ATM during the weekend. Accessing cash from some customers' accounts on ATM during weekends. What type of misuse of data is that, boy? If you, if you, apps, all, um, all of the stuff that you're putting in the chat, they, those are, those are valid, you know, logical answers. But when you're answering questions for CXC, you have to answer it the way that they want, where, meaning you have to use words from the syllabus. If you don't use words from the syllabus, you're liable to get zero marks. And then you will be like this. How? is the Ministry of Education in Trinidad, in Guyana, in Jamaica, in Barbados, allowing CX to do this to us, still. You just kind of be like, so I have a good answer. My answer totally makes sense, but because I didn't use the exact words in the syllabus, you give him a zero. All right. Okay. All right, CXC. You, um, you... All right, then keep your secrets. Yeah, so that is, that is how the thing must be. So you have to use the exact words that they ask for. If you don't use the words that they ask for, you'll be in another problem. So access cash from um, other person's account. That could only be, that's fraud. Because you are, you get, you're taking the money. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, fraud, yeah, because you're, you're doing it. You're doing it falsely on your like you, yeah 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 impersonating yeah, them to get their money from their account yeah so that's fraud and then part five collect personal information on certain employees collect personal information when you're collecting somebody personal information you are Privacy breaching, breaching privacy, breach privacy, invasion of data theft, uh, data theft. J I feel data theft. Yeah, that that's only to the bus to yeah. The reason this is a little confusing is because this paper is from 2013, right? So because it's from 2013, the words that were on the syllabus are a little different to the words on the syllabus now in the 2020 and up syllabus um syllabus, right? So the words were refined a little bit in the 2020 syllabus. So in the 2013 one, they may have put a question a particular way to, to get to get a particular answer out here. But they um they would have updated that for the new syllabus. So that's why the question are a little, a little iffy. But that's okay. We we um we pull it through, we pull it through. First, you know. It, it, it didn't start off too well, but we made it. No matter what the score was, we're going to finish hard. We're going to finish fast. Yeah, they had us the first half. I'm not going to lie. All right, so any question, do you that? Do, um, don't give up. They might have you in the first half, but you, you can make it. You can make it. All right. Fishing wasn't even on the syllabus back in that time by um, DDF. But I understand. If, if it came in this 2021... Probably it could have been fishing if they were again, but they usually ask along a particular line. So we have to keep in mind that is our old paper that was on the old syllabus, but trying to get all the answers, all the, all the questions that will be still relevant to 2021, because they could very well bring back questions like, sort of like these, right? All right, state two differences between RAM and ROM. RAM is volatile. ROM is permanent, well, semi-permanent, because it could erase ROM, but if it's EPROM and PROM and whatnot, but give two reasons why it's necessary to have secondary storage, one, to save files, two, to store large programs, 
Yeah. Basically. Can't really see anything else besides that. That's good. Alright, write the numbers. I to VI. That's 1 to 6, sir. Just to let you all know. For each term in column X. Write the letter AF that corresponds to the term in column Y. Alright. Oh, okay. So we had to try to match this. Alright. Um, flash drive. Right. Use for data archival purposes, but must be accessed sequentially. Alright, we'll stick up in there. A set of metal dismounted on a spindle, we stick up in there also. Has limited storage of 1.44 megabytes. Alright, we could jump on this one time because we know 1.44 megabytes is definitely a floppy disk, so we put the three there. Clearly. Alright, so we deal with this guy. Uses laser beam. Let me stick with it because usually as part X by the, the, the answers are not supposed to be any sort of us, right? Uses laser beam technology to read or write data. Yeah, that laser beam technology giveaway. That will be a CD-ROM or a DVD. So DVD, that is IV. Cool. Comes in various shapes and sizes. What? What? You, you, you give me a clue. And the clue is comes in various... All can I think of come in various shapes and sizes. And like a car could come in various shapes and sizes. A hot dog could come in various shapes and sizes. A pen could come in various shapes and sizes. Like, oh gosh, all you... It's an IT exam. You could say a lot more than that, right? But, again, I had to keep telling all of this. And you will see this one all the time. How is the Ministry of Education in Trinidad, in Guyana, in Jamaica, in Barbados, allowing CX to do this to us still? We don't know, but it's okay. All right, using digital cameras, photo printers, and cell phones. All right, using digital cameras, photo printers, and cell phones. That would be memory cards, clearly. All right, so that's VI there. Six. Um, all right, so let's go back to the others now. Use for data archival purposes, but must be accessed sequentially. That is, now we narrow it down. We know that's magnetic tape, because magnetic tape is accessed sequentially all the time. Then we have a metal a set of metal disc mounted on a spindle. Right, so when you have metal disc mounted on a spindle, that's a hard drive because it spins. So hard disc will be for two. Yeah, I don't know how a hard drive works. And comes in various shapes and sizes, a flash drive. Now tell me, tell me, if I just come up there and be like, okay, tell me some IT device that comes in various shapes and sizes. Well, the first thing you're supposed to think is flash drive? Like that? That don't, that don't make any sense. Whoever wrote this question... That, that, that. It, it do add up. It, it, it do add up. It don't, it don't make sense. But... Let's continue. The... Oh, I see somebody had a message in the chat there. So, what are your thoughts on that June 2021 paper? You think it's going to be hard? Uh, no, I don't think it'll be hard. It'll be different. I think it'll be hard. Um, like, every year, well, it's like, the first question I see is asked if it'll be hard. How is it supposed to know if it's going to be hard? I, I can't predict that. I just know that CXC has the ability to make questions weird. Whether it'll be hard or not. I I know I ain't gonna know. They might have weird questions because the way the syllabus structured, everything is in one big question now, so that I kind of stretch to make it relevant. So it could be, could be not. I don't know. All right, the only show insurance company has one computer that stores all company data. The company handles a large amount of confidential client data and needs to ensure its accuracy. The company has been asked to use encryption, encryption, um, city purpose of encryption. To um wow to conceal the data during transfer yeah that's the purpose purpose is to conceal it like there are other examples like you could give an a lot of stuff you could write on encryption but they actually would purpose 
suggest it suggests the type of data that the company may want to encrypt um the insurance company um i don't know customer files customer records yeah or you could think like payroll or you could think like you know um anything that have to do with money or data like that you could use those so it should be okay wow cracking my neck is so like you know so fulfilling these days all right suggest so two security measures that can be used to prevent an agent from viewing another confidential file so you could put um uh, one will be a uh, username and password and two file restrictions file access access restrictions yeah something so that's cool something about right Stay true precautionary measures that could be taken to protect the client data in a case of a fire. Well, one, you could get a fireproof safe. Um, and two, you could have off-site backup. Yeah, a fireproof safe will protect the things inside and offside backup will protect. Well, it will allow you to be able to return the data when you're done, when you finish. All right, next one, explain two validation checks that the company can carry out while entering data in the computer. Validation, validation, validation is um making sure it is valid so you could get um range check. ensure months uh between one to twelve right that would be a range check and then two could be a um consistency check ensure age matches with data boot and then you have plenty of other checks you have range check consistency checks you have presence check you must they must put in an email address you have um a, a data type check they must put in a number for their age or the date or something like that format check the the, the, the date must be formatted in month day year or day month year you have all those different checks um if you if you have um yeah if you have problems then you could check out my website um if you go on the website you will see make it simple tt.com and then you go to videos csec it videos and you will see i legit have oh yeah cash course starting tomorrow if you can register i know <laughs> tough i know if you can make it in um then i have all the videos here so i have Theory videos, I think I would have gone through verification and validation in some one of these videos here. Um, yeah, all right, if you're struggling with algorithms and you don't know how to do the algorithms, you go to this algorithms and problem solving section and you will learn how to do all the algorithms I need to do. And if you're struggling with your SBA, there's the sample SBA walkthrough, and then there's all the other skills that you need to know for all the different parts of the SBA, from databases, spreadsheets, Word, fillable forms, everything. And then there are even short videos um, at the end. These, these short videos, they just show you the actual skill, no long talking, no drama, no memes, nothing. Just for the people who want the, the basics. And then I have paper multiple choice answers will reach that and reach that time paper two answers every single paper from 2021 go back and we're trying to get to 2010 so basically i have all the answers for every paper all the way back to from 2021 back to there and then we have the paper answers by year for the later papers so from january 2021 each individual question 
and all the most recent papers i'll have them answered by year so if you're struggling just head to the website make it simple tt.com the link in the description and you should be able to get anything i need trust me like like really and truly <laughs> you could study it by yourself and you wouldn't and you wouldn't need anything i just have it all there like because IT is supposed to be easy, why? IT is supposed to be, it's supposed to be simple. You think IT is not supposed to be complicated. We're supposed to get as much people into IT as possible, or at least understanding IT. That's my goal, to get the Caribbean IT, you know. It's my hope that in the next 10 years, somebody will say, yeah, boy, that man on YouTube, he really inspired me to become the programmer, and that is why my app's so big right now. Yeah, that's, that's something I, I would want to hear, but... We gotta start. We gotta start it small. All right, so let's go. What's the hexadecimal representation for number twenty-one? Oh, that is binary. Binary is no longer on the syllabus. So we just swerve from that fairly easily. Move quietly. Move on. Um. The spreadsheet below shows the performance of 30 students from a particular high school in TSEC examinations. Thanks. State the number of rows that are illustrated in the spreadsheet. The number of rows illustrated in the spreadsheet. So rows go by number. So this is... Here's the problem with this, right? Watch this question. The number of rows that are illustrated in the spreadsheet. So do they want the actual number of rows um, that in the actual sheet or they want the number of rows that were used? Because it's possible that it could be 6 or it could be 7. So I would say it's 7 because it's illustrated. Illustrated means drawn. But that's, that's one of them kind of questions. It's kind of like, you know, what? What just happened there? Um... Uh, write the formula used to calculate the total number of students who passed chemistry. All right, total number of students who passed chemistry. We want to add up these three numbers here. One, two, and three. What cells are they in? This is in B4, C4, D4. All right. So we're going to say equal sum b4 colon d4 all right that will make us be able to go from here b4 all the way down to d4 which is here and we add it um oh uh, what's that how come binary not on the syllabus i don't know why they take binary off the syllabus i feel it's because people are just like doing bad in it doing bad because of the binary so they just decided uh, we'll take it off the syllabus. And they took off Pascal, Pascal programming because they wanted to give everybody a chance to use any programming language they want. So that's cool. I was okay with that because you didn't need to have a definite programming language. You could have just focused on the algorithms and let them learn the code separately. So um, binary and computer science, though when they do computer science at Form 6, you'll get hit with binary hard. But... It wasn't really totally necessary for Form 5, even though you could do it, but I don't know. Like, I know when some, some children, when some children get the binary, they used to be like, what is going on here? And they'll watch the binary question for like a whole 10 minutes. I, I kid you not, a supervised exam. And they just sit down and they watch any question and they just watch it. You know that kind of look when somebody's sitting on an exam and they just kind of sitting down and they're staring in space and they don't know what's going on with them. Like they're contemplating all kind of, all kind of things like, what am I really doing here? Why am I writing an exam? I don't know. Yeah, that kind of thing, yeah. So, that's, um, okay. Um, if range A4 to F6, it was sorted in ascending order by subject. See the cell location of biology after the sort. Alright, so in ascending order by subjects will be B first, then C, then B. So B will end up up here. So it'll be A4. A4, yeah. 
biology will be in A4. That's the cell location because they ask you the cell location. State the name of the function that should be used to find the number of subjects listed in the spreadsheet. Um, that would be count, count. Yeah, pretty much. State the name of the formula that will be able to find the least number of passes with grade uh, with grade one. Least giveaway min. Like this Excel question, this Excel question was so much cake. Like students just kind of watch the Excel question and then it'll be like, oh my goodness, this is hard. But when the Excel question come by you, this how you had it, this how you had to talk to Hey old man, give me everything. Call an ambulance, but not for me. If the Excel question looking hard, do 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 let do let do let get you. You will be the one that will be destroying the Excel question. Excel questions aren't that hard. It's just have this big diagram that's make it look like it difficult. But trust me, you could flip the script. Our next one, our next question has caused um children problem all the time. A database question. The um. Because you just get flustered and be like, oh my goodness, databases, I don't know anything. Like, no, you do. You do. You know it. Don't act like you don't. The January Excel question, it wasn't hard. It was weird. Because you weren't too sure what they were asking. But, yeah. All right, the phone is all of customers, money owed, and phone numbers. Um, what are they arguing about it? King Kong and Godzilla. Was anyone in Spanish? If I went to what Spanish, me leaving my house for nothing, you know. I don't want to know what's going on outside right now until I get a needle in my shoulder with the, with the vaccine. I, I ain't risking nothing with nobody because Trinidadians could be stupid when they're ready and I really can't handle a lockdown. Like I can't handle getting um getting told that I had to stay home for um I can, and I can't go anywhere at all. When I want to go somewhere, I'll go. But I ain't really trying to go cinema and them kind of thing. No. Like that that ain't with it. That ain't with it at all. Alright, so we're gonna again. Um following us a list of customers, money owed and phone numbers. Right, cool. Copy and complete the database structure to store the data in the format given. This is cake field name. Alright, so this here, basically what you're trying to do is turn this into a table. And if you were to turn it into a table, what would you name this? You would name this name. What type of information is stored inside of name? Text. So name. Text. Field description name of person yay all right then we look at this one this one here is um amount so we'll name it amount what type of information is inside of it currency i mean you need to know your data you stuff to know that text on currency are the um the, the words that they're looking for and then um field description <laughs> among the o as really straightforward there eh? um who's that quinton you from jamaica what going on with all with covid all the lockdown when i say lockdown what do you mean lockdown lockdown as if you go outside the army will shoot you or lockdown as in curfew or lockdown you could go outside with your mask if you if you get a chance you know that kind of thing how oh, yeah Uh, most of you say, Antonio, they should remove Pascal, add Pascal and kick flowchart. No, flowchart, flowchart, way too easy to add. Add Pascal and take out flowcharts. No, flowcharts ridiculously easy compared to, compared to learning Pascal. You, no, I can't argue with you today. All right, so the field name here will be telephone, data type. Okay, now because this this here has a dash inside of it, you can't put number because if you put number, that means it wouldn't accept the dash. So you have to put text because it has to be able to accept the dash.
right? This is the only part of this question here that I will have a little problem. But here's the real issue now. The real issue is you ought to write all of this and then get three marks. And I'll be like, how is the Ministry of Education in Trinidad, in Guyana, in Jamaica, in Barbados allowing CX to do this to us still? It's bother me each time, you know. It's bother me each time. Some questions is be like nine marks to write. Explain what is secondary storage, and it had to be yes, had to be fighting, fighting, fighting to find all the points that I need to put. And then some questions you have a whole table to fill out with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine things. Nine things you have inside of here, and they give you three marks for it. They're real wrong for that. Like they're real wicked. When 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 you get questions like this, you just can ask yourself. Oh boy, how how they do that? Why? Why? But anyhow, you take your three marks and you run. State the field name from the list you have provided um above that can be used as a primary key. Primary key is anything that is totally unique. So out of all the things here, names could be the same. Amount could be the same. Telephone numbers, however, they are unique. So telephone will be the best thing for a primary key. Um, write the three criteria to search the database table for all the persons who owe more than 500. All right. So people that owe more than 500. We want to find all the persons. So we need to get a name. So we're going to say select name and amount where amount is greater than 500 right whenever you're doing a query you have to say the fields that you want to get out of it which will be the select part and where is what you want to actually um filter out of it Queries are pretty straightforward, but again, some of you all have watched the, watch the database question and then they start to dodge, right? But do, do run, do run, do dodge it. You could do it, you could do it. Trust me, have the force in you. Mm, I don't get a Star Wars meme, I don't get a Yoda. Yeah, I'll get a Yoda quick. All right, see the feature of a database management system that prints data in a specified format with a title in databases as called a report yeah so this question wasn't that hard it's, it's just some weird stuff where you get three marks for doing that but everything else is really really straightforward thing so you just take that and you get you take your marks and just say yeah. Take your marks and run. Your marks are yours. Take it. You you don't ask any questions. Any question easy? Just just say alright, cool. I'll take it. No problem. We good. We good. All right. So let's continue. All right. Draw a flowchart for the following fragment of code. This is all they want, eh? All I want is this little thing here, and I want you to draw a flowchart for it. And you see these seven marks there? This is what we're talking about, the mark equality. All marks matter. But let me see if we could figure out how much marks you're going to get for this. Now, when they say a fragment of code, you know how to start off with start and blah, 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 and then end off with stop and thing. Just go from wherever they, they, they start off from. So they start off with a if, and you're like, all right, cool. A if is a diamond. What are we checking for? We're checking for P greater than Q. Is P greater than Q? There will be a yes. And then there will be a no. So let me see what's going to happen. If P is greater than Q, yes. Then P is equal to P by Q. One of, one of the tricks for flowcharts is once you see an equal sign, a equal sign is a rectangle. So for a equal sign, just put it, put, put it inside a rectangle because equal is a process. So you're going to say P A is equal to P minus Q. And then the else now would be the no part, 
So this is the no. So yes is if it's true and no if it is not true. Else, rectangle again because it's a process. QA is equal to Q minus P. That is all they want. All. They don't want anything else. Because they ask you for the fragment of code. So don't try to put no start. Don't try to put any stop. Just, I don't know. You could probably join these two here and pull down another one there. But other than that, you know. So, how are you going to get seven marks for this? You wouldn't lose marks. But let me see what the seven marks will be. Seven marks will be. Usually you get a one for the diamond. You get a one for yes and you get a one for no. You're getting a one for using a rectangle and putting it with inside there. And next one for using a rectangle and putting it with inside there. And your next one is for the um the lines. The next one is for the lines and arrows. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six. Where is seven mark coming from? Me, you know? I don't know. Like this, 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 this question here have an extra mark for the one that it was supposed to give over over here. <laughs> for the three. How are you getting seven marks for doing that? We don't know. But we say thank you. And you take the marks and you run with it. And as we like, alright, cool. No problem. We good. So Because the examiner's report and thing, they don't say anything about that. Like when you read an examiner's report, it's come out like this. All right, then keep your secrets. Good. Like for years, I try to read your examiner's reports to find out what the questions are and all them kind of things. But I mean, mm. you're using correct operators. Well, using correct operators now is going to make a difference because you actually have the correct operators in the algorithm. It's not like you had to figure it out or find it. You basically just had to write it over. So, usually for, usually for a flowchart, what they're testing is your use of the shapes. Did you use the shapes properly? Are you, you know, using the shapes in the right way? That kind of thing. But anyhow. All right. So, uh, trace table. Ooh, as soon as all they hear that word trace table. Running. Why are you running? But remember, I showed you all multiple times trace tables, not that hard. All you have to do is just slow down, take your time, and think a little bit. Just a little bit, a little thinking. Alright, so hold on, let me see. So we're using this algorithm here to do our trace table. And it's a truth table at the same time. So it's a one and a one. Right, good. So P, Q. Is P greater than Q? The answer is no. See, they have Y or N? No. Follow my dear so far. Is P, which is our one here, greater than Q? Is one greater than zero? Yes. Is P greater than Q? No. Is P greater than Q? No. And that is one column there. Notice this guy here has eight marks here. So everything that I do in this trace table counts. So you can't leave out the trace table because you don't understand what to do. Throw some things inside the trace table. Try it. Get some marks because those marks will be the difference between you and the person who leaves it out totally. So just remember that, right? So next thing we're going to do is say, um, P A. Alright, so what's P A? Oh, Alright, so P A is equal to P minus Q. So this is really P minus Q. That's what the um that's what the algorithm says. We're looking at what this says to do here, we're gonna do that, right? So P minus Q. Zero. One take away one will be zero. One take away zero will be one. 0 take away 1 will be minus 1, and 0 take away 0 will be 0. All they're doing is maths. It's pretty much straightforward. Then this one is QA. QA is Q minus P. So Q minus P. 
Q minus P, one take away one is zero. Zero take away one is minus one. One take away zero is one, and zero take away zero is zero. Ta-da! Guess what? You get eight marks there. Won't you skip P, A, if P is less than Q? Oh yeah, that's true, yeah. So, you'll only do this one here. So, this one here will give you the Q, A, 1. So, if P is greater than Q, the only one that will get the 1 here is yes. Everything else will be blank. Yeah. All right, so basically let's put in those lines. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? So the eight marks match up there now. So all you really want again. It wasn't that hard, was it? It was kind of straightforward. All they're doing is breaking it down by column, and after each column, you look at what the next column is and since it's linking back to the algorithm, you follow the rules of the algorithm and easy stuff. Eight whole marks you get there. And you're cool. And you are cool. All right, let me see what's next. Alia wrote the following program. This is Pascal. Eh. Swerve. Um, consider the array nameless arrays of the of the syllabus. So again, write a program in Pascal to do the following. One more time. And then you are done. End of test. Kick. Right, so that was the whole um that was the whole of the May 2013. So next week we'll be doing the January 2013. And we're working our way down. So within by the end of April, we should be finishing all the past papers to 2010. And then for me, we could spend time revising every Sunday. So don't forget to tell your friends, tell your family. Not your family, but you know, everybody that doing IT. Um, that I'm um, the guy. I'm here. All right, and don't forget check the website out. When you check the website out, you will see all the videos that have been done before. If you're doing past papers and you're practicing and you, you want to see if your answer is correct, or you want to check and see what I said about it or whatnot, every past paper for the past six, seven, seven years now would be up there. Seven years of past papers, January and June. You could go and check them and see the answers and whatnot. And if you still have your SBA to submit and you're not sure to do some of the little skills, that have skills inside here with the um, algorithm, trace table, um, databases, all those different things, have all that there. Because we in this thing to win it. We're not here. We're not here to be nice. Yeah. Fit, don't worry. It's okay. Some people don't know the value of gold until they see everybody else blinging. So when you do your mock exams and you come out on your mock exams at like 90 something in IT, and everybody watch you like, how you get at? And you be like, Sunday night, you remember I tell all you? I told you, but you didn't want to listen. And then they will be like this. Oh my God, he it from, oh my God. But you won't be like that. You will be like, <laughs> Because you're going to untop your class in IT. Hey, hey. Wow. Oh, fit, fit. Look at you. Look at you. All right, all right, all right. 97, she says she got in. 97, you get in a class? Yeah. Yeah. 
Nice. All right, so I look in the belt all day. Um, and I will see you next week, Sunday, when we do a new January 2013. And it will learn plenty as it go along. It was nice. I will see you all later.